Hey everyone, good morning. Welcome to the Teach Better Today morning show where the Teach Better team gets to join you live every single morning, Monday through Friday at 7 a.m. Eastern. Our stream is currently streaming on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Twitch, and LinkedIn. So make sure you're following the Teach Better team on all those platforms. This is also, of course, an episode of Teach Better Talk podcast that publishes at least seven podcast episodes a week, if you can believe it. So there's a lot going on over on that podcast. Make sure you add that to your subscribe, rate, and review repertoire. And of course, if you're looking for your next great podcast, head over to our podcast network or our blog page to get some newbies to go follow and learn from. We have a great show ahead. Katie Miglin is here. We'll be right back. Ready for the day? Are you so ready? I'm so ready. You're so I'm ready. ready yeah, I'm ready to start my day with you. I'm tired. <sighs> I mean, there's that. I am. It's just a sleepy, sleepy Monday. I don't know. Hey, do you know what that thing is behind me? Do you see that? That like, line? Uh, the sun? <laughs> it's the sun. For those of you who cannot see my screen, the sun is starting to peep through, which has been a long time since the sun has come out this early, and I'm here for it. So I mean, it's almost like you're in L.A. I was in L.A. a few weeks ago, and the sun was out shining. I couldn't even take you and your L.A. trip. Okay, full transparency. When I went to L.A. to work with a, we work with a, a school district out there that is doing like really, really, really cool things. Yeah. And um, Katie had been out there before. I've been out there twice since. And I literally spent four days in La La Land walking around just being like, it's so nice here. I'm going to move here. This is amazing. The last day, my last day driving to the school before I went to the airport, I really took a look around. And I'm going to be honest, LA is not my... <laughs> my cup of tea. It's not my type of city. I'm the opposite of a city girl. It just, everything is better when the weather is nice. Like yes. I'm in this, I'm in this haze of like, I'm going to move here. I'm going to change my, my whole life and uproot everything I've built and just come to LA. And then I looked around and I was like, okay, wait, I don't, I don't actually want to live here. I just love that it's 70 degrees every mm -hmm. moment. And that's amazing. I 100% agree because like, so you are obviously Chicago, like you are in Chicago, but I am like two hours, two and a half hours south. So for me to like be in traffic, anything like that, like, heck no, I do not like traffic. This is why I don't live in the suburbs. I like my little like country town in the middle of Illinois, but going to LA, I had zero frustrations with traffic because I was like, it's so nice. I'm going to roll my window down and I'm going to like, look at really nice, nothing. I mean, it's like, it is, it's still a city, but it does feel like I can handle a lot more because there's a sun and I'm not frozen. Yes. Yes. And I am even, not, a, I live outside of the city for those of you who are like, I'm in like a, a, a Western suburb. Yeah. There's a lot of things about the city that aren't aren't my vibe. I don't mind traffic. I just don't like, uh, I feel like my environment really shapes how I feel day to day. And just the trash that you find in a city. I don't, it really bothers me. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, there. it's just, it's, there's more people, it's more populated. There's more stuff. Yes. Um, yes. yeah, it's not, honestly, I can let go of a lot of things except for the traffic. Like I, if I, when I want to park, I just want to pull in somewhere and park. I don't want to deal with like everything, <laughs> literally everything involving a vehicle. So I maybe that's... someday I'll get like super rich, have a driver, and then I can have like a, you know, small apartment in a city and pretend that I can tolerate it all. Well, so I was sitting out, like on the beach in Santa Monica. That was the only time I went to the beach. I was trying to like 
you know, you can't go. I felt like you couldn't go to LA and not see the ocean. So I was like, I'm just going to go. Cause we were pretty inland mm -hmm. and I went and had a glass of wine was right on the beach, saw the ocean. I was reflecting. So I'm looking up apartment costs where I was, oh boy. which was comical. I mean, let's be honest. I did a quick search. The first one that came up was $16,000 a month. So I was like, oh, I guess, I guess this isn't my kind of people. <laughs> wow. So then I turned to chat GPT because that's what I do these days. Because <laughs> that's your friend. Yeah. That's that's who I talk to. That's the only friend I have these days. Um, I was like, hey, chat GPT, where can I live where I'm less than a mile from the the ocean, but is like a reasonable cost? Like get like okay. you have the whole coast. Yeah. Where give me somewhere. And it recommended like one very small town in Oregon that apparently is super underrated and undervalued and is on the coast. And I was like, perfect. I'm going to bring all my friends to this one spot. <laughs> like We're all moving there. But isn't it colder up there? Well, that was the problem is it was Oregon. And I'm like, wait, but they get four seasons. That is that like, I mean, it wasn't really accomplishing what I wanted. I guess. Right. Now I will say when I went to LA for my one trip out there before you stole that, that school from me, um, <laughs> It was like an abnormally cold day and I like didn't care. I was like, I'm in LA, it's California. I am going to walk to a coffee shop. And mind you, I was so stubborn about the idea that it might be cold yeah. that I like didn't pack a coat. And part also too, I didn't want to like fly with one. So I like didn't pack a coat. I'm like wearing like, it was, I don't remember, maybe like March and I'm wearing like sort of summer <laughs> attire because I was yeah. like, it's supposed to be nice. And I like froze my butt off walking to a coffee shop. And then, and then I'm still so stubborn that I sat outside and ate breakfast and my breakfast got cold before I could even finish it. Cause it was so cold. And everyone around me is like, you're dumb. Like they're in like winter coats, winter hats. And I'm like, it's not negative 400. Like it is in Illinois. I'm going to live it up. That was something I really enjoyed the first day I was there is that it does get chilly. Like you yeah. probably do occasionally need like a fall jacket in LA as a Chicago person. But I mean, I went the first day um, trying to dress professionally, but it is their winter. So I'm like, okay, I don't know how people dress if your winter isn't like 12 Freezing. sweaters and, yeah. and like a jumpsuit. So I wore a sweater dress, which I was like, oh my God, I'm going to, I'm literally just going to sweat the whole time in this. But thankfully, because it was a dress, I like had a flat on and I was like, okay, something. Um, but when I was getting coffee, people were walking in in snow boots and beanies. And I'm looking around, I'm like, guys, it is, it is 60 degrees, 60, 60 degrees. And there are people walking around, beanies, boots, jackets. I'm like, you look like you're heading to Chicago. Like, what is happening? I know. It's funny. Like, actually, our next door neighbor, um, their daughter, graduated from college and moved to, she's been in a few places, Bakersfield, LA area, and now she's in San Diego. And she came home for the holidays. And I was like, it was like kind of cold, but like pretty mild here for the holidays. If you remember, it was like decent. And she was like, oh, I, I've totally lost my ability to like, function in cold weather. She's like, I've been out there for so long now that I like forget what actually cold weather is. She's like, sometimes I force myself to not like completely bundle up because I'm like, oh yeah, this is not actually that cold. But I think there is something to be said when you're like detached from like what really is cold. I mean, I'm sure people like sure. north of us think that we look ridiculous when it's 30, but 60 yeah. does seem very like like in Illinois, if it was 60 degrees tomorrow, you know that people would be in shorts. We would be outside in shorts, like refusing to go inside because it's so nice. Yeah. Like yeah. it's supposed to, it was like supposed to be like 50 and people were like, it was the talk of the town because yeah. it's February and 50 and oh my gosh, we're going to do all these things outside. I will say you guys know, I, I'm, I really like clothing and I, it's a mild obsession that I need to be better in. Um, but you see pictures of people in the winter looking so stinking cute walking around the town. Now I'm like, oh, it's because it's really not cold 
and that's how they can wear like because the girl okay i'm literally thinking of a girl that walked into starbucks with the beanie and the boots i'm like you look so cute in that outfit and you can wear it and not be worried about it not being heavy enough because it's right. so warm out right so i understand now how people can get away with with that vibe because when i think oh, i want to wear a cute outfit it's negative 13 degrees mm-hmm. that outfit isn't really conducive because it's not heavy enough you know? right because i still will feel my bones chatter yes exactly but anywho i don't know what what what's the summary of what we just talked about i don't like what's just, the takeaway because i think we both just like had a moment of like let's pretend we live in california and dream it's really warm out that's i think what this was this was like us and our feelings yeah i think the major takeaway is good morning we're really glad you're here we are going to talk about some cool stuff coming up and make sure you're bundled up. We'll be right back. into some educational conversation here on Teach Better Today Morning Show. We're talking 12-hour live schedule. Because it's out, guys. It's out. It's public. I'm so excited for another 12-hour. We convinced you again, Ray Hewart. Ugh, yes, but it, thankfully it's not. Like, there's so many of you who have been DMing wanting 24 hours. It's not. It's never going to happen. 12 hours, once a year. I Here's the thing, you guys. Okay, can we just, like, Pretend for 30 seconds we were to say yes to a 24 hour, which will nope. never happen, but let's pretend. I've really thought about this because you know, I'm game for planning stuff off the wall. I like to, you know, be right in the middle of like your yes and no game and Jeff's yes and no game. I'm all about it. But here's what I don't understand is I started thinking like about 24 hours. I'm like, okay, there's at least eight hours where no one wants to be awake. Would we all? choose to be awake to like make it work through the night. Sure. But what person at three in the morning wants to hear literally anyone speak about anything of importance? It would be like gibberish from probably like midnight till 6am because it would just be people like not away. I mean, it would be the three of us, like just talking banter and nonsense. Like nobody wants that. So really us saying no is you're welcome. Yeah, you're welcome. The 12 hour live schedule is out though. So for those of you who want to participate with us in the comments, March 2nd, you can win stuff. You can hear from guests. Now the schedule's out. You can kind of plan your day. Obviously we, we want you guys to be around for 12 hours. Like that would be great if you could commit to the whole time, but knowing that you have a life (laughs) is important. So Mm -hmm. take a look at the schedule and just like pick a few sessions you want to pop into. It's going to stream everywhere facebook youtube twitter twitch linkedin everywhere so you can kind of have it you know on your phone and listening while you're at a kid's activity or you know if you're at home throw it on your your smart tv and have it playing while you're doing stuff around the house i mean this this is a really fun time and obviously we have a ton of giveaways which is always enjoyable so yeah and our giveaways are the way that they've been in the past you can either there's some that you will sign up and then some that will give be given out live so if you're someone that's like i'm listening i want to win some of these things but i can't get to you know it's too hard to type in your phone whether you're driving whatever you can always get online um all that will be shared with uh you know with our audience so that you can connect that way but one of the things i do love and i know this is kind of anti what we're like promoting today but I do love when we hear from people who maybe like half listen on the day of the 12 hours. So they're like, oh, I'm going to run errands. I have you guys in my ear. But then they circle back around and they actually like watch it for professional development. And what I mean by that is they're like at their computer, at their school, like with notes and really kind of taking in the information. I love that there's so many people who do that because they're like, oh, this topic has a bunch of takeaways, but I'm not near a notebook right now. I'm going to listen to it again. So just know that all of our segments get posted again later. 
obviously we love when people join us the day of because it's fun for us to like watch all the comments. It's good for our community to kind of communicate through that. But if you listen to something and you're like, oh, I really want that, make sure that you check it out again later because all of that will be posted and it becomes an academy um, course like way down the road. Yeah. So it's all saved, which is nice. Yeah. I mean, geez, you could go back and rewatch all of the 12 hours if you wanted to. I bet there's right. like 72 hours of free content. Yeah. The schedule is kind of cool though, friends. If you take a look at it, if you haven't seen it, um, I mean, we've been emailing it out if you're on our email list, but also just go to any one of our social platforms. I, I promise it's been posted recently because we're really wanting to make sure you guys all catch it, but it will literally be half an hour or hour long segments for 12 straight hours. I feel like there's a theme that you can see where the morning is on a variety of topics. And then you're going to see a shift where the afternoon is more exclusive training that we typically provide schools that we're working with, but is not quite the professional learning that we provide here in our, you know, free streaming platform. So it's kind of nice to be able to offer some support to our community that we don't always get to provide. So there's a lot. Katie, can you pick maybe two or three things to highlight on the schedule? Obviously, people will go grab it, but are there any segments that you think are are noteworthy to to discuss here this morning? Okay, I am all I like every time I've ever been asked this question, I always lean on the ones that are like the quick takeaways that you can apply right away. Yes. So we have one about picture books. Super excited to hear Brian Fennell because obviously we love her She's on our team, but she has like so many great ideas. So I'm excited because I think that'll be one that people can literally implement then on Monday. Yeah. Um, anything with AI, I think is exciting because it's just like another person. I mean, obviously our team talks about it. We've used it, but to just get another person's perspective of how they find it beneficial in the world of education, that's with Sarah Thomas. That's going to be great. Again, that's a morning one. Sarah Thomas, for those of you who uh, might be thinking about how that's a familiar name, but can't put it, she's the one that is the creator of Edgy Match, and they're yeah. doing a ton of AI development right now. Yes. Um, and we have like some really great leadership slash like admin role yeah. segments, which I know is something we continue to work on and, you know, add more because we know that's something that is needed. But Mark Horner, who's a, an administrator that we love and work with in Ohio, he'll be joining us that day with Josh. Brad Hughes and Josh will be doing um, some stuff about like trauma informed practices. So I don't know, honestly, like there's just, I'm like scrolling up and down. Like there's so many, I, I just feel like this one, there is a difference. Like I know in the past we've maybe done like a theme for the whole day, or maybe we did like a morning theme and an afternoon theme. I think I like this one the most because there is literally a mix of everything. So there will be something for every type of educator from an administrator, all, the, you know, in all of the roles that you would see in a school, which I think is super cool and all different levels. Like whether it's your first year teaching or you've been teaching for 40 years, you can take something away. Right. Um, po talking like poverty, breaking barriers within education, like love all that kind of stuff. So yeah. Yeah. It'll be really good conversation. Friends, the, there's nothing you have to do to tune into this. This isn't like a like a webinar you got to register for, but it might be helpful for you to go subscribe to our YouTube channel. That is where I think is the easiest place to uh, watch 12 hour. It's also something super easy that you can pull up on any device. You can obviously yeah. see that on your phone, your computer, and your television will be able to see that in many cases. So just make sure you're subscribed to the Teach Better team over on YouTube and you're kind of set to go. This is all happening March 2nd from 8 a.m. Eastern to 8 p.m. Eastern. And uh, it'll be a ball. I'm so excited. So cannot wait for all the fun. Katie, um, if they want that schedule, they should just take a look at their email. Do you think that's the best spot? I would say either your email, if you're not connected with us via email, make sure you do that. But you can also check out, um, you know, it's posted on our Facebook group. It's on all of our socials. Or worst case scenario, just DM one of us and we can get that to you. Um, we also encourage, I know we're going to push this again like later in the month, but we also would encourage you to tag your teacher friends or administrator, anything that anyone that you think could benefit from just some of it. You know, it doesn't have to be like, hey, Ray, I think you should improve in this. It's like, hey, join me in the comments during this segment. Um, and so we can learn alongside each other because there will be right. so many good things. Well, and how many of us are dying for just good professional development that we know is going to be with a positive tone, solutions focused like mentality, but have those tactical takeaways. That's 
that's a, that's the biggest thing we promise in this yep. in this experience. So we yep. promise it'll be a good time. All right, Katie, I'm excited for them to go check out that schedule. Friends, we hope you have an amazing day ahead. Thanks for sticking with us throughout this conversation, and we'll see you super soon. Make sure that March 2nd date is in your calendar. Bye, guys. Hey, Teach Better community. Thank you so much for joining the Teach Better Today morning show every single weekday at 7 a.m. Eastern. We have so many resources for you outside of this live stream at teachbetter.com, including blogs, podcasts, and professional development that will bring our team to your school. Wherever you are listening from this morning, please make sure you are sharing and celebrating the incredible educators in this world. And hey, if you are listening over on a podcast to Teach Better Talk, we would love a five-star review. (laughs) The comments are always so entertaining. (laughs) We'll see you tomorrow.